I recently did a review video of a portable power station solar generator, and in that video, I mentioned that I felt that DIY was dead. Well, now I have a DIY channel, so of course, that comment, um, let's just say I got a lot of feedback on it, but I don't want to run from it. I want to dig into that. Was I right? Am I wrong? So today I want to compare a DIY build to a portable power station solar generator that's store-bought. So here is the store-bought one that we are going to build today, or build a comparison of today. This is the Opus Mega 2, and this is not a promo of them. You could use any one you want. I just happen to have this, but, you know, EcoFlow, Blue Eddy, Anchor Solix, whatever you want to use. But this unit has 2,000 watt hours of stored energy and an inverter that does about 2,400 watts of power. We'll go over the rest of the specs in a minute. But I'm going to build a comparable DIY build, and we're going to see, is it cheaper? Is it better? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Let's really dig into this and find out where does DIY fit into this new world of ours. So hang on, hang out, tune in, let's have some fun and get to the bottom of this today. I already briefly mentioned the specs on this unit, but we need to go through the entire spec list so we know what we need for our DIY build. Basically, we need to follow the recipe and we need to get the ingredients. So to start with, it is a 2,000 watt hour battery. So... This is a 2500 watt hour battery. I'll be doing a 24 volt build. Second thing, it has a 2500 watt inverter. Now the closest I have is a 2080 inverter, so it's not gonna be 100% exact, but pretty good. 1600 watts of AC charging, so we'll need an AC battery charger. Two thousand one hundred watts of solar, one hundred forty volts at fifteen amps. So we'll need a Victron one hundred fifty charge controller. That's still going to be a little bit light, and this is actually seventy five fifteen. But let's just pretend. A uh, couple other things to mention: it has a six year warranty. It weighs fifty pounds. It does USB pass through, which means as you're charging it, you can use the outlets. And it's got a ton of USB and a ton of DC. Those are just things to remember while we're building it so we can compare. Also, this is $750. Now, that's not all we need. We also need a bunch of little components. We'll need bus bars. We'll need a fuse. We'll need a low wattage circuit breaker. We'll need a high voltage circuit breaker. We'll need some sort of shunt or monitor. This is a Hall Effect monitor. You can use anything you'd like. We'll need a battery switch. Turn everything on and off. Of course, we're also going to need a box. We're going to need wire. We're going to need tools. All of that stuff. So now let's see how much all of this stuff costs. Remember, $750. Battery charger, 50 bucks. Victron 150 charge controller, 182 bucks. Jung Pal inverter, 200 bucks. Dynas 24 volt 100 amp hour 2500 watt hour battery 300 bucks bus bars $17 fuse fuse holder $36 circuit breakers 30 40 bucks shunt monitor Again, this is Hall Effect, but you can use Shunt or Hall Effect, whatever you want to use. 20 bucks. Battery switch. 25 bucks. And I already mentioned you're going to need the tools. You're going to need the lugs. You're going to need the cable. You're going to need the wire. You're going to need the knowledge. You're going to need all that. But just everything you see here, not including the cable, 
the lugs and the wire and the box. And if you wanted to put it in the box, you probably need fans too. Not even including that. We are up to $845. Remember, this was $749. So it is $100 more at least to build a comparable build to this budget power station. So my DIY friends out there, don't despair. This is not the death of DIY. It just means the world has changed, and we have to shift to that. Small builds just are not economically feasible anymore. You can buy a small, portable power station solar generator cheaper than you could build it yourself. It's more convenient. It's more powerful. It's just easier to move around. It's just better. So why would you want to do a DIY build? Well, there's still plenty of reasons why you'd want to do a DIY build, and there's still plenty of ways that a DIY build shines. The first example for me is it's customizable. Let's say you wanted to build something that had a 1200 watt inverter, but you wanted 80,000 watt hours of battery, and you wanted 15 charge controllers, and you didn't need any um, AC in. You could build it that exact way. Let's say you wanted one that was 10,000 watt inverter and you only wanted one little battery and you only wanted AC. You know, you could build it any way you want. So you could customize a DIY build any way you want. You can't do that with a portable power station. You're restricted to what, how they are. You know, you're restricted to what they come with and you can't change it. Now, you can expand the capacity on some of them, but you can't change the charge controller or change the inverter. So DIY still shines in its ability to customize and expand. Another way that DIY really shines over store-bought is the fixability of a unit. Let's say the screen goes out on this. Well, if the screen goes out on your DIY build, you take this off, you buy a new one, you replace it. If the screen goes out on this, the entire unit is dead. Or if your inverter goes out on your DIY build, get a new inverter. You got a battery that dies on your DIY build, you replace the battery. This, if something dies, you're just you're dead in the water. So the fact that you can fix and you know your DIY build is just so much more powerful. I like the sense of empowerment that my DIY build brings. I know what all the components do. I know what's going on. I know if there's an issue, how to fix it. I know how to adjust it to my needs dynamically. So I really like that part of the DIY build. Another way that DIY shines is if you're building something large. And here's a real tangible example. I have a decent sized portable power station solar generator that runs several of my buildings. But like all of them, it has limited battery capacity. So what I did is I built a DIY battery bank, a massive bank, and it expands the capacity of that portable power station solar generator immensely and so much cheaper than if I was to buy the expansion batteries of, from the company. So you can use a hybrid solution where you use portable power stations and you still do DIY build on the battery part of it, or you can just do complete DIY builds if you're doing something huge, something for your whole house. So there's still plenty of places where DIY shines. It just has changed, and we have to adapt to that new world. But power stations are now a viable option for what used to be pure DIY builds. So if anybody out there has a DIY build, built something big, built something small, has a story to tell, love to hear what you have to say. Please leave a comment below. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to everyone soon.